Okay, how about is there anyone here who wished they could paint or wished they could be an artist and haven't given themselves permission to do it? So you're all like, it's okay. It's all okay. That's great. Well, I don't agree. <laughs> I think everyone is an artist. I think every single human being has the capacity to be an artist. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can move, you can dance. And the permission of being an artist is allowing yourself to have the freedom of expression. And that's what my work is going to be about, and that's what I'm going to talk about, is how I returned to being an artist, and how it was a very powerful healing experience for me, and how I brought this into hospitals. And I'll share the story of how I brought it to my first hospital in Shands, um, Shands at the University of Florida in Gainesville. So, I know I have a few minutes, and I really, what I'd like to do instead of talk, I'd like to invite people to sort of share what it is, one of the things I would like to ask, or just at least think about, what it is you're most passionate about in your life, what part of yourself is the most creative, if you could do anything you want, what would it be? Joseph, you're a healing artist. Okay, I'm a healing artist. You're a healing artist. So are you doing ex are you doing what you're most passionate about when you make your um, videos? Absolutely. And tell me why that is. Because I lose myself. I just blend into the visual images and become part of nature. That's what, that's what, and that is the physiology of healing that's activated when people move into the creative process. It actually activates a place inside of yourself that reconnects with a feeling, a deep state of feeling of relaxation and peace, renewal and regeneration. And when we use art intentionally as a way to return to that place, it can be very, very powerful. And what I'm proposing is that art is like medicine. It's a tool that we can use intentionally to reconnect with the part of ourselves that's in that flow. In that flow. And when we think about creativity, we don't want to limit ourselves by thinking that we're just talking about the traditional arts. Um, you might be into your writing, research, nursing practice is an art. You know, everything you do in life, cooking is an art, gardening is an art, where we lose ourselves in the pleasure of being. And it had been so remarkable here being in Japan because um, the Japanese aesthetic is so powerful. I went to the shrine um, just yesterday. I wish I could remember all these most beautiful shrines' names. But I was in this shrine, and there was this beautiful garden. It was called the West End of Paradise. It was a sh shrine for Buddha. And they had this beautiful garden, and it was like they had meticulously created such beauty. By just walking through the garden, it was a healing and peaceful experience. And one of the things I have found being part of, you know, being in this environment, the Japanese environment, is that there's a part of where we can actually find a way to return to ourselves. So when I talk about the arts, I'm not only meaning outwardly doing something, but actually receiving the artistic beauty and 
and being aware of the beauty around us. And one thing I wanted to share with you that I brought back from my travels in Japan last time is, um, and I've talked about it a lot, that um, in Japan, um, they have historically created environments that are healing. These environments are so powerful. And that beauty, beauty is healing. You know, going and being in a place where you see such incredible beauty, walking through the flowers and walking, and Japan is a place where, it, for me, I'm a very intense, busy person. I'm a busy bee. I'm busy, 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 busy. And um, I was here the other day, and I know I'm just going to start my talk in a second, but I'm a beekeeper at home, and I take care of bees. And this place was the first time I went up to this mountain, you know, the, that, the spiritual mountain, and there was this beautiful garden, and I was there alone, and it was the first time I ever watched the bees go from flower to flower to flower to flower and watching them and I thought what a gift and I only, and the truth is I only found the time to do that here in Japan so I really thank this beautiful this beautiful world this beautiful island the beautiful people because every experience has been a great teaching for me so thank you for those of you that have arrived um, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Mary Rockwood Lane. I'm on faculty of Watson Caring Science Institute, and I'm also I also worked on the board. So I'm very committed to Dr. Jean Watson's work. I also started an arts and medicine program at Shands Hospital at the University of Florida, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. That program I started in 1991, where I brought artists and dancers and poets and theater groups right into the hospital, right to work at the bedside with patients and families. I also am in faculty of the Center of Spirituality and Healthcare because when I did my research of what was powerful about implementing the arts in practice, what I discovered is that many patients had a spiritual experience. So my commitment to the arts as how can we administer, not just to the body, mind, and emotion, but how do we really offer patients the opportunity to heal spirit? And um, so that's been my, the basis of my work. So I'm going to share with you a video that um, was taken here by my dear colleague, Joseph. And it's a beginning of my passport. This is one of the most beautiful sacred places. This is one of the places where the monks from the high mountains came down. They created a temple for Buddhism, a Buddhism that was inclusive of all the common people. So this is one of the most beautiful power spots in Kyoto. And you can see that Buddha brings light, wisdom, compassion, and understanding for all of us as we open our hearts to be on this journey. book I bought on my last pilgrimage to Japan. I bought it in 2012 when I was here with Dr. Jean Watson at the Hiroshima Conference for Caring and Peace. And this is a book that I bought that I take with me everywhere I go to the temples and the shrines that I visit. And I wanted to share with you, this is like, each one of these are beautiful pieces of art that were handmade by each, at each temple by the monks at those temples. And this is beautiful calligraphy that's a signature of each one of these, the temples. So this is like a passport book that's supposedly my passport to heaven. And I wanted to share it to you because this is a very beautiful piece of art that I'm collecting and I cherish. And I have signed every temple I go to. begin this journey, and as I began it many years ago, it, I had an opportunity to find out in what my personal life I needed to heal. 
So it begins with my own personal story, um, where I found I had an experience of tremendous um, pain and suffering, physical and emotional illness, and I discovered painting. And in that experience, I learned something very profound. I found out that art can bring us to a place inside of ourselves where we truly discover what needs to be healed. And through the merging of the inner artist and inner healer, we can begin a powerful journey of our, with ourselves. This was a, a, my, one of my first paintings I ever did. And I painted these paintings. I was very, very sick. I was, I had, my husband left me. I had two small children. And I was devastated at this experience. And an artist asked me to, invited me to her studio to start painting. So this is one of the paintings I did, and I activated. I had no idea I could paint. I had no idea. So this is the first time I ever did oils. And these, I did a series of about eight paintings where I discovered, I started with the first one, which is, I don't even have the first one. It's very broken. I discovered when I started painting that the woman that was painting the paintings also became the healer within. And as I did these paintings, this last one that you see on the end, it was when I painted that last one, I was able to see that I was in fact healed. This was such a powerful reflection of how the creative process tapped into something I did not know I had. I did not, I had never been an artist before. So I discovered I could paint. So suddenly I became an artist and suddenly I became my own personal healer. This experience was so profound to me that I decided to go back to graduate school and start, a do start my doctoral studies. But before I did that, I decided that I was going to bring artists in the community to invite patients and families and staff in the hospital to begin to invite them to make art. So I met with a physician, his name was Dr. John Graham Pohl, and I met with him and I said, I really feel art is medicine. Art is a way we can invite people to use as a way of healing. And he happened to be the physician who was on the bone marrow transplant unit. He was a pediatric oncologist. He was very depressed. 50% of the patients on the bone marrow transplant unit passed away. So it was a place of tremendous suffering. So what we decided to do was begin there. So we began by bringing artists into the hospital. So what we discovered is that patients families, and staff began to tap into their own creativity. They began to become merged with the suffering and the darkness that they held within. And we invited them to make art. This was so powerful that artists from all over the country came to the arts and medicine program because people discovered, people knew, artists knew, people didn't know inside that creativity can be very empowering and very, very healing. So artists came from all over the world. At the same time, when I did this work, I was told by my dissertation, my chair, she says, I have two people I want you to go meet. And I said, I was so excited. I'm starting my dissertation. I want to research the power of art and healing. And I want to do research. And this is what I'm going to do. And she goes, there's two people. One is Dr. Jean Watson. She's out in Colorado. I want you to go meet with her. And I started my program in January. And I took the first week in January, right when I started my program in 1991. I flew out to be with Jean. And Jean spoke, taught me her theory on human caring. She said, the, uh, she said nurse, at that time she talked about advanced therapeutics of nursing practice. And I decided when I was bringing the arts into the hospital, these were advanced nursing therapeutics. And that she also, her theory became the very foundation of the Creating the Arts program. Because what I did is I went back to the hospital, I met with all the nurse managers, I met with all the nurses on the units, and I said, I'd like to bring artists into the hospital, into the patients' rooms. And I would like to invite volunteers who are musicians and dancers and artists to work at the bedside with patients. Now, these people are not caregivers. They're not hospital people. So they're going to be coming into the patient's room, and they're going to be singing. They're going to be making art. 
They're going to be doing what they can do, but we're going to do it inside the realm and the clinical practice of nursing. And we are going to take Jean Watson's theory that nursing is about caring, and we are going to provide experiences for patients that are around art that create caring encounters. Now, in the very beginning, I wasn't explicit about Jean's theory because I was more interested in getting the nurses to become liaisons. But in a way, I was, without, without being open, like talking about Jean's work, I was introducing them to Jean's work. And when we would bring art at the bedside, it was truly what we discovered, a practice of loving kindness. Each artist practiced from their heart. And the most important premise in working with artists and patients and family and nurses was about the emphasis on loving expression. And I talked about how important it was for patients to have something beautiful to look at and something beautiful and creative to do. This was based on the expanded view of the person because Jean introduced me to Alex Gray, who I went to New York, and I saw the power of how art heals by just being the presence of it. And at the time, I didn't, I didn't know about heart math, but I knew intuitively that when a patient is making art within the, in partnership with another human being, that something very powerful is happening. There's an exchange of energy between those human beings. And that changes the, ener the energy field in each room. And when nurses and physicians would walk into the room when a patient was having music played or a patient hung their artwork on the walls, it totally changed the environment. And I didn't talk about this either, but in retrospect, art is about the opening of the heart. It's about letting the heart find a way to have expression. By music, by song. I'll never forget the day there was a young girl who was dying. And the musicians came into a room. And they said, would you like us to sing you a song? And they sang a song, Brown Eyes, you know that beautiful song. Um, and they also, one of the most requested songs at Shands is Amazing Grace. That's one of the songs that most people request. So I discovered that music, we were pioneers at this time, and music was being integrated in all places in the hospital, and it was happening, and it was be, people's hearts were being opened, and that's how it started. When I did my research, I interviewed the people patients and families, Alex Gray, all the artists all over the country who articulated that art was in fact healing for them. So I began to collect data. I did a qualitative research study based on Max Van Madden's researching the lived experience. I used his method. And these were the themes that emerged. People who used art as a way of healing began by telling the story of their own pain and suffering. And when they began to make art, it was as if they had an invitation to go elsewhere. And they used art as a turning point. And when they began to make art, they moved into a flow, like Joseph had talked about. They get into this flow of what this one woman said, it was like slipping through a veil. She had pancreatic cancer, she was in terrible pain. She would wake up in the middle of the night and turn the light on, and she would begin writing her novel. And she said it was like slipping through a veil. I left the world of knowing that I was going to die soon, living in a world of terrible pain and suffering. And suddenly I became a character in my novel. And I was doing the passage to India, and I became the characters I was writing about. And I completely slipped away. And I had this incredible experience of being in a new place. And she also talked about how she embodied the essence and spirit of her life. And all these themes came from the interviews and the information I got for each and every person. Most of the time they talked about a healing, a feeling of compassion that they felt towards themselves and a deeper understanding of who they truly were and a witness to their life and their suffering. 
And what I realized in, in as people told their stories, well, what was it that was healing? What was healing? I suddenly felt a oneness with everything, as if I felt a spirit that enveloped me, and I could see that I was one with everything. Or, I suddenly could see out of the eyes of an artist, and I saw beauty all around me, and there was total connection with everything I saw. Another story. I heard the voice of an angel telling me they would never leave me as I walked through the threshold between life and death. Another story. I saw in my painting, in my sculpture, a light. It was as if this I saw a light that was revealed from the other side. So these were the stories that they told me. So how to use art as a way of healing? How can you use it? It's a calling that we can create environments that honors the creative process of ourselves and each other. I use guided imagery. I use art as medicine, where art truly becomes medicine. In the work that I do, I invite people to use journaling and tell their stories. And I ask people to do a, to a project. What in your life you, are you most passionate about? What is it you would love to do that engages your creativity, that also you integrate your intention for healing and caring for yourself? These are examples of mandalas that students have made where I ask them, what is, who are you and what is the essence of you? And they did beautiful mandalas. They spent an hour totally engaged in just the making of the mandala. And then after they made the mandala, we hung them all around the room. And then I said, look at the mandala. What does this mean to you? What is the message of this gift of your own creative process? And they would then tell another story. So it just begins to use art as a way to open ourselves up to the freedom. And movement is also a powerful way. I've written a book called Healing with the Arts, and I call it a 12-week program to use art as a way of healing. And every week I invite you to make art, to make poetry, to do dancing, to do mandalas, so you can begin to tap into this incredible creative fire that's in every single one of us. And you begin, what I found is people begin by dancing in the darkness. They be begin to dance their pain. And literally the pain guides them into the movement of the dance. And they return to the memories of this pain and they embody the pain through the dance. And then it begins to unravel and transform into art, and transform into something totally different that heals them. So I return to art as a way of caring. I want to remind us when we make art, and I remind all my students, I want you to make your art and engage in the creative process with love, kindness, and presence authenticity and believe and have faith and hope in the process of your creativity. Trust it. Trust where it takes you. Go ahead. Express the positive feelings. Express the negative feelings. Allow yourself to go. Be creative. And at the same time, practice empathy. You are embodying your own story and you're witnessing the story of someone else. And we create a sacred space for this work to be done. Taking care of what it is in your life that needs to be healed. And in these experiences, I have just a moment or two left, miracles unfold. They unfold. I'll tell you the one story about um, a young man. We created a ceremony. This is me in Cyprus with these women who are drummers and we made art. But in one of my most recent stories, I had my, one of my students, who I interview my students at the beginning of the semester. And I said, what is it in your life that needs to be healed? He says, I'm doing great. I'm a survivor. 
I said, if you could use art as a way of healing, what would you like to do? He said, I'd like to do poetry. I'd like to write down all the lyrics of all of my favorite songs. I think this is what I want to do for my favorite, my project. I said, that's great. Is there something in your life you think you might like to heal? He says, well, when I was a freshman two years ago, my stepfather who raised me, he killed my mother and he shot himself. And I didn't have time to deal with it. Do you think maybe I should work on that? I said, well, we don't want to get too, you know, intense. But yeah, that's exactly what I think you should do. So he, we did 12 weeks, you know, the whole time. I knew when he was making poetry. I knew when we were making art. One day we decided we had a drama class. And everyone was going to have three minutes to do drama. And they could do anything they wanted, and they were going to do it in total silence. So, I, it was the time he got up in the room, and he stood in the room, and he looked at me. And he suddenly got on the floor, and he reenacted the, he reenacted the telephone call, where he got this call. And his mother and stepfather had been killed. So he was returning back to this home for the first time. Now, he said all this in silence. He didn't tell me this. I watched him. And the students watched him. He returned to the room, and he walked through the rooms of his childhood home. And he said, only words he said was, it's OK. I guess they cleaned everything up. And he walked into another room. It's OK. I guess they cleaned everything up. And then he walked, he sh we walked through the memories of his life. He walked into his bedroom, and he picked up a, a picture of himself as a child, and he took it with him. And we all witnessed it, and even though no one in the room knew the story, everyone in the room was crying because of the power of his sharing these moments. And in that moment, he recreated that memory with love, with witnesses, with strength, and he survived it. And after it was over, he looked at me, and he sat down, and that was the end of the story. But I knew in my heart, returning to that experience was so powerfully healing for him. So I invite you to use art as a way of healing, and I wanted to conclude that I did a telesummit where I invited leaders from all over the country in the United States to talk about healing with the arts, and Dr. Jean Watson is one of them. And I had 11 people speak to healing with the arts, and I made this telesummit. And if you want to listen to any of these talks, you just, read, you just go on Healing with the Arts, and you can listen to the telesummit of each person telling their story of healing with the arts, starting with Dr. Jean Watson. So I want to end with... Thank you to the International Association of Human Caring Conference. Each one of you is the light and beauty of a rainbow of caring. And as I end, I want to say, be visionary. Go inward to your own visions. And bring them out, not only to change the world, but to transform your own life. Become empowered. Be the artist and the healer that you are. For when you heal yourself, you heal the earth, your community, your family, and yourself. Do not let anything stand in the way of your creativity, for that's who you are on earth today. The creative artist and healer, I honor you, and I thank you, and I invite you to bring the arts back into caring, back into health care, back into our communities, and honor them for the value that they truly give us with the beauty of healing. And I thank the people of Japan for sharing their environment with me and healing me even more deeply than I was before. Thank you.